Hi, all Baines here from OzBSA Bantams and welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video, what we're going to be doing is working on the Celex Beach race bike and a few of the issues that I've got to overcome and how I'm going to engineer and do all that. So, without further ado, let's get stuck into it. So that's the mock-up of the bike at the moment. Um, I've obviously got the front end on and we're just having a look at a few things. That little tank down there is off a motorised push bike. So that's what I'm going to mount up here. So it's one of the jobbies that we've, we've got. Um, we've got a minor issue with the rear shockies because the actual stud down here is bigger diameter than this. I'll, I'm going to see whether the bush will push out. But we'll get onto that. But my first, first cap off the rack is the front brake. So we'll have a look at that. In a second. We just want to have a look at it again. Looks good. Right now, so uh, obviously I haven't got the uh, backing plate in. And this is the backing plate. So this is this on a normal bantam locates in against the forklift, which is steel. But you don't want to have something that localized on an alloy forklift. So they've got the two original caliper mounts for the disc brake. So what I will do is actually take this plate off. I'll grind the rivets off, punch it out, fit it up, and I'll have to make a another plate that will locate in on the on the lugs. Here, so what I'm envisaging doing is machining up a couple of stubs with a thread in them uh, and then welding those to a plate that will, I'll rip it back onto here. So, we'll get into it. So I fitted up the brake backing plate in there. Obviously it's upside down. Uh, I just modified my spacers either side and got the real nice and central. So I've um, just done a measurement over to the lugs over here from this face here. And so I'm gonna make up, about to start making up a new plate. Um, what my mindset is, is to make a couple of cylindrical lugs, lugs. Uh, bosses, threaded bosses here, so we can bolt straight through into uh, the threads in the in the bosses, and then the plate will have a little bit of a dog leg to come to come this way through here. So we'll make a start on that. So I've just ground the heads off the rivets and I'm just driving them, driving them through now, but they're pretty well done. Certainly doesn't want to come out. Here we go. So we got it off. But interestingly enough, the size of the diameter of the rivets, they're like nearly 516 diameter. Like they really meant that to stay on, which is good. I mean, it's for a break. Um, so um, I will just give this a little bit of a clean up and start, and I'll use this as a template to start making the bracket to go um, across for the new setup on the fork leg. Yeah, pretty beastie. So how I'm gonna go about this, I'm actually gonna cut out another piece like this, and I will leave a bit overhang out the back. Then I'm gonna go and machine up the two bosses and bolt them up to the fork leg, and then get everything lined up position-wise, and then cut out and dress the last of this plate off. I'll show you as I, as I go along, but um, well, luckily enough, I've got a bit of, bit of plate, same thickness as that, which is what I think I'll need. Thank you. 
So, oh, I don't know whether you could see, you might be able to just see it. Uh, I've got that marked out, obviously using this as a template. Um, it's angle up, obviously this will be trimmed back, but I'll get all this um, drilled out and mount it on, back onto the brake backing plate and then fit it up and then I'll be able to get in position for the other stuff. So off to do some drilling. So, um, what I'm doing is drill, drilling out the rivet holes here, but I'm drilling them out smaller. And the reason for that is so I can pick up on the uh, brake backing plate and get them perfectly aligned. Because I am going to re-rivet them, I'll make rivets, but you've got to have the holes like pretty spot on, like the, the mating holes between the two pieces when you, when you rivet. So, a bit smaller, I'll use the backing plate as a template. So I've got my uh, the smaller rivet holes drilled. I'm just doing the bigger hole in the center now, 25 mil drill. Obviously not gonna hang on to the plate like that by hand with a drill that size. And we're through. So, um, I think that's gonna give me enough clearance this 25 mil is going to give me enough clearance on the spaces that I've got made up for the, on the front wheel, but I'm just going to double check while it's in here because I might throw the boring head in and just take a couple of mil out of it. We'll, we'll have a look. So I've got the boring head in. I've decided to bore it out. So we've only got oh, a couple of mil to go. So. Take out. It's alright, this is only a clearance hole, so I'm actually using the graduations on the back of the, um, the actual boring head. I mean, if you saw a couple of videos ago, I usually, if I'm doing precision stuff, I'll set up the dial indicator on it, but um, don't need to on, on, on this. We're just, all we're doing is just doing a clearance hole. So we just finished on the Miller machine and that's what we've got. I've just got, I've just bolted the plate through there and now it's time to fit it up to the bike and start getting some more measurements for where these bosses are going to uh, contact here. I will dress all this up like a bit nicer profile and all that sort of stuff. You know, I'm not going to have a flame cut edge with a coat of paint on it. I will actually dress it up. But anyway, let's get it on the bike. Right, I'm just getting ready to change this uh, brake back and plate over. If, if you wonder where my helpers have gone, well, Levi's got a better option. I'm just looking up because it's starting to rain. Um, he's out on the 60 horsepower tractor with his father doing some work out in the paddock. So he loves it, absolutely loves it. So, and I love it too. He should be out learning how to do stuff like that. He's pretty good. Um, so we'll get this brake back and plate off and then I'll throw this other one on and we'll do some measurements. Grab the other one. We've actually had, um, the weather here has been absolutely crap. We had gale force winds this morning. It's the rain's just starting to come in. It's springtime here, which is an absolute pain. So I've already, already made spaces up. So these have got the locating shoulders in for centralizing the um, brake back in plate. So we've just got to get this in there. I'll try and jiggle it around by myself. Carry the other side. Yep, that's about it. That's going to have to come off. That's going to have to go back in. 
bit of a bastard on your own, but anyway, that's the way it goes. Yeah, we got it. Rightio. change camera position in a second, bring it in to have a look. So that's our, our plate. As I said, I'll dress it all off. But the reason I wanted, and this might put it more in perspective, I wanted it in a position so I know where the location of these bosses are going to go between here and here because they'll be they'll be welded on and well welded welded around the back as well around the like I'll spot through these I won't just weld them straight on so that gives me a bit of the ability to measure between there and there accurately so I can make these uh, bosses up pretty accurately and it also gives me the ability to position this wherever I want it. So pretty happy. I'll start uh, I'll start lining things up, start cutting some more out. So I'm just uh, marking out where these are the two um spaces bosses whatever you want to call it that will go across and will bolt through the um the fork leg so i've got to mark out holes to drill these i've put a i've shouldered these so they'll be a press fit in so i'll back weld them and looking at it all from an engineering point of view um i i think i might put gussets in here it's just that that torque effect once the brake comes on it's a fair it's a fair distance a fair moment to get that happening so i'll have a think about it and see how it comes up I, it might just it might be all right like, like it is to be honest but um i'll i'll make a decision on that later but anyway i'll get this marked out um so and this will also give us our new profile for aesthetics and making it look a bit prettier than what it is other than a lump of metal right now. While the sun is fortuitously shining on it, I think you can make out the profile of uh, how I want the plate to look. Um, I'm just drilling this out in the center there to give me the curves around the two, um, where the two bosses are gonna get welded on. So I'll get this drilled. Just about got it done just a bit of finishing off of the file and um i'll press the bosses in and we'll have another fit up and see how it all looks on the bike <laughs> so anyway that's how it's turned out now on the back uh you can see i've got a fair Fair chamfer in there, obviously that's for weld prep. Um, but I'm, as I said, I'm gonna press it all together, we'll fit it up on the bike, make sure everything's gonna line up before we start welding, and just see generally how it looks. So we've got it in, and that's the way it's looking. Um, everything fitted up really nicely. That wheel spins nicely. I was concerned about if you get this dimension here wrong, it can actually distort the plate a bit. So, and actually like twist twist your plate. So I'm looking at, I was gonna put gussets in here, but I really don't think I need it. I think it's well and truly strong enough. 
So what I have to do now is run a beta weld around the back here on each of these and I have to get a plate organised to take the brake cable. So I'll measure that off um, an existing brake backing plate and we'll we'll get a um we'll get a little plate welded in there I think. I'm pretty happy with that. I think it's come up all right. So that's it out of the bike. However, <laughs> as always, I've got to have I've got to have uh, a place for the cable, front brake cable, to hook into and adjust from. And I genuinely thought. I'd be able to put something in down here and I haven't so what I'm gonna to have to do make another one but I'll use this as a, as a template I'm not happy I don't want to just go and weld a lump of lump of steel on here I'd rather it all in the one piece so they're not welded so we can knock them out so it'll be all right So version 2 is underway, so I'll make these holes here and here, they're all to put radii in different corners, so that's going to be the hole up there, drilled and tapped, and then bent over, and that will be for my um, brake cable to come through. It hasn't taken that long to knock it up, because the other one's a template now, so let's get it cut out. All right, so there's Mark II version, all done and in place. The only thing I've got to do is weld the weld these and put some rivets in, but uh, I'll do that tomorrow. I won't chuck them on this video. You'll see the you'll see it in future videos how we how we went. But yeah, decided to uh, make that uh, mount for the adjuster for the front brake cable integral rather than just weld something onto the other one I had I think it looks a lot better I'm, a lot, I'm, I'm glad I did it a bit of dicking around but um yeah not a bad outcome as I said I've got to machine up some rivets and we'll get that riveted so uh, from me late in the day uh, I'm gonna go and have a beer so to all my subscribers, old and new, thanks very much for your ongoing support. And from me in the workshop at Oz Bantams, I'll see you later.